Hello, Crenshaw fans. We are back here on chapter 24 with Crenshaw. And let's go ahead and begin. Last we left off, they are living in their van and the police officer gave Jackson money to give to his family. And the dad's pretty upset about it because I think he's just frustrated because he doesn't, he wants to be able to provide for his family. So let's see what happens to their family next as they're living out of their van. Chapter 24. The next day we dropped by my mom at her part-time waitress, waitress job. Before she got out of the car, she looked at my dad and said, we have to apply for assistance, Tom. Ooh, assistance. I wonder if that means help. We'll be back on our feet before they deal with all the paperwork, he said. Still, plus we probably make too much money to qualify for help. Still, they looked at each other for a long few seconds. Finally, my dad nodded. We went to an office called Social Services to find out about help. My dad filled out lots of forms while Robin and I sat on the hard orange chairs. Then we went to three hardware stores where my dad put in applications for work. My dad grumbled about all the gas we used up. To cheer him up, I said maybe we could feed the car water instead. He laughed a little then. Not having enough work is tough work, my dad told my mom when she joined us in the car after her shift. He took a deep breath and blew it out hard. <sighs> like he was, he was facing a birthday cake with too many candles. Dad, I said, I'm kind of hungry. Me too, buddy, he said, me too. Almost forgot, my mom said, reaching into her tor to her tote bag. I grabbed some of the bagels that the chef was about to throw out. She pulled out a white paper sack. They're pretty stale though, and they're pumpernickel. That's a flavor, boys and girls, a flavor of bagels if you haven't had it. Well, that's a start, said my dad. He stared out the window. After a moment, he clapped his hands. Okay, let's get this show on the road. Guess I can't stall any longer. My mom touched his shoulder. Are you sure about this, Tom? She asked. I get my paycheck tomorrow. We could go to the food pantry or the shelter. Nope, I got this. He smiled, but it didn't look like a real smile to me. I'd rather do a little performing than stand in another endless line at some office waiting for a handout. We drove to the back of the restaurant. My dad found a nice clean box in the dumpster. Are you making the begging sign? I asked him. He'd been talking about it off and on with my mom since our money was stolen. Given that I'll be singing for our supper, he said. As he tore the box into pieces, I prefer to call it a request for gratuities. What's a gratuity? I asked. A tip, money you give someone like a waiter. My mom said, when we were young, your dad and I used to be street performers before we had regular gigs. Lots of musicians do it. I've got this down to a science, said my dad. First off, you need a cardboard sign. Then you need a busy intersection. The best corners have long stoplights. It might not hurt to take Aretha, my mom said. People love dogs, I told my dad. I bet you'll make a lot of more money with a dog. Can I borrow um, a marker, Jackson? My dad asked. I handed him my blue marker. That guy on the corner by Target, he has a puppy. My dad studied a cardboard rectangle. No prop puppies. Right, God bless, at least, said my mom. Everybody writes God bless. Nope. As it happens, I have no idea what God is up to. My mom sighed. My dad scribbled something on the cardboard, like he was in a hurry to be somewhere else. He held up the sign and asked what we thought. I didn't ha answer right away. In second grade, my dad got a D in penmanship. A D is not good, boys and girls. Which is how you make your letters. He did not improve with age. What's it say? I asked. Thank you. Looks a lot like thank you. He shrugged. Even better. So it looks like, friends, that Jackson's dad is going to be singing to earn some money and hoping that people will give him money for his singing. Chapter 25. 
We drove to a busy corner and parked next to a Starbucks. It was a cool and rainy kind of day. Are you sure about this? My mom asked. Let me join you. Won't be the first time I've played an outdoor concert, my dad said. And you can't come with me. Someone needs to stay with the kids. We waited in the minivan, watching him as he crossed the street. He had his signs and his guitar, but not no Aretha. My dad stood on the lane divider by the left-hand turn signal. He propped his thank you sign against his open guitar case. We couldn't hear him singing. There was too much traffic. He needs to make eye contact, my mom said. The light turned red and a line of cars formed next to my dad. Someone beeped his horn and my dad looked over. A driver in a taxi passed him some money. The next time the light was red, a driver in a pickup truck gave my dad coins. When the light turned green, people mostly just passed by, their eyes on the road ahead, but a few smiled or nodded. Red, green, red, green, the hour wore on. When he climbed back into our van, he smelled like a like car exhaust. He passed my mom a handful of wadded up bills and some coins. Seven lousy bucks and change. It's really starting to come down, my mom said. People don't like to open their windows when it rains. He, she gazed at the wet dollars. We could try up uh, by the mall. Maybe it's just a bad corner. My dad shook his head. Maybe it's a bad idea. We need the rain, I said, because of the drought and all. Good point, said my dad. Let's look on Jackson's bright side. After a while, the rain slowed to a drizzle. We drove to a park so my mom and Robin could get some fresh air. She said Robin was going stir crazy. How about you come too, Jackson? My mom asked as she undid Robin's car seat straps. Nah, too wet, I said. You're both going to get wet, my dad warned. Robin's getting antsy, my mom said. We can dry our clothes on top of the car when the sun comes out. Day just gets better and better. My mom leaned across the seat and kissed my dad's cheek, which was kind of stubbly. Good times, she said. I stayed in our minivan with my dad. Aretha, who smelled a little ripe, was sleeping in the back. I decided to draw a new sign for my dad, a better one, like the one my mom had made for our bathroom door. I tore some cardboard off of the end of my sleeping box. Then I made a smiling fish sitting in a canoe. He was holding a fishing pole wearing a floppy hat. In big letters I wrote, I'd rather be fishing. My dad was dozing in the driver's seat. His eyes were closed, but he wasn't snoring, so I knew he wasn't serious. I poked him with my sign. Try this next time, Dad. He blinked, rubbed his eyes, and took the sign from me. For a long time, he just stared at it. Great job, he finally said. I like the mustache on the trout. Nice touch. Just FYI, rather has an E. And ID, oh, Never mind. It's great, kiddo. Thanks. If it gets wet, we can grab some more cardboard and I'll make a new one. My dad set the sign down gently on the passenger seat. Then he opened the door and stepped outside. It was misty. Leaves were shiny and dripping. Mom says she's only seen my dad cry three times when they got married and when Robin and I were born. I watched my dad lean against the hood of our car and cover his eyes with his hand. His face was damp, but I told myself it was probably just the rain. Okay, readers, why do you think Jackson's dad is crying? It doesn't sound like he cries that often. If you want, you can write down in your notebook, why do you think Jackson's dad is crying? Okay, readers. Chapter 26. During the afternoon rush hour the next day, my dad returned to the same corner with his new sign. It was drizzling again and the gray clouds hung low in the sky. I waited in the car with my mom and Robin and Aretha. My mom had just gotten off of work at Rite Aid. She said two people were out sick, which meant she was the only cashier. People in line were grumpy. She said, why didn't they just read the inquire and wait their turn? A driver in a red SUV rolled down his window. He smiled and said something to my dad. They both nodded. My dad tucked the sign under his arm and held out his hands till they were about two feet apart. I'll bet dad's telling him about the trout at the lake, I said to my mom. She smiled. 
and exaggerating. Is that the same as lying, I asked. Not when it's fish related, said my mom. When the light changed, the driver handed my dad money and waved as he pulled away. After about an hour, he collected a bunch of dollar bills, also a big cup of coffee and a sack, sack of, with two slices of lemon pound cake in it. My sign was a soggy mess. My mom flattened the bills on her lap. $56, she announced, and 83 cents, my dad added. My parents shared the coffee. I split the pound cake with Robin. Then I climbed to the back. Aretha was tail thumping, hopefully. When no one was looking, I gave her my whole piece. It was, all, was windy and cold and the rain had come back hard. We listened to the radio as the tiny river zigged and zagged down the glass. A new man went to stand on the corner. His sign said, Vet, God bless. A small poodly looking dog was nestled in his half zip jacket. I still think you should take Aretha when you, with you next time, Dad, I said. I'll bet we'll make even more money. He didn't answer. I figured he was listening to the radio announcer. She was warning that the chance of rain was 80%, so it was a good night to stay inside. A summer day camp bus stopped at the light. Its windows were fogged up. I saw some kids and hunched down in case I knew them. Someone had drawn a smiley face and with a word by it. Hello, I decided. Hello. I decided, but it was hard to tell. I was on the outside, so everything was backward. Aretha licked my sticky hand. Next time, my mom said, leaning her head on my dad's shoulder. I'll do it. No, he answered so softly I couldn't even hear him. No, you won't. Okay, friends, poor Jackson. It's good that their family got a little money when their dad was singing the guitar. But Jackson is pretty embarrassed that he's living in, in his car and he's shrunk down when um, a bus drove by. Would you be embarrassed? What do you think? How would you feel if you were in Jackson's shoes? Okay, we will continue tomorrow, friends. Think about what we read as good readers do.